On Prince Edward Island, there's a cottage that puts a new spin on things. We've got the ocean view here. We have the cliff view uh, a little bit to the left. We have the harbor view over here. Speaking of views, beauty abounds, both inner and outer, on BC's Sunshine Coast. You just walk out the doors and then you have this, and what could be better? And then we turn to Manitoba to see a refuge on the refuse. Some people even recently have said, I don't know who'd want to build on a dump site. <laughs> I'm Steve, and this is my retreat. In a small fishing village called North Rustico, on the northern shore of PEI, the weather can turn on a dime. So does this place. That's right, this dream escape was built to spin. So because we have all the views, and because it is a round house, we wanted to really capture the views. Steve and Stephanie Arnold use the upstairs as their private oasis. The main floor, they've broken into four suites to rent out. As far as we know, this is the world's first rotating bed and breakfast. The B&B &B was the inspiration for the rotation. Because we've got the water on one side, only two suites would be able to enjoy that view if the house didn't rotate. So now by changing the view slightly throughout the day, each of the suites can capture a variety of different views. It goes so slowly that you really don't know that it's rotating. It takes about 45 minutes to do one full rotation. Then the house reverses direction. But if you really want to take in the view, you can put it in park and stare out to your heart's delight. Everywhere you see is glass because we have such an expansive view here. We want the guests to be able to take in every little bit of that. They got the idea five years ago when they were living in Australia. Boy, these guys really do get around. Stephanie saw a magazine article about a rotating house and showed it to Steve. And he said, we should go visit that guy in the house. So we're not going to go up to someone's house to look at it. He's like, no, not just to look at it. Maybe we'll do it. I said, you're crazy. We're not doing it. Stephanie's resolve didn't stop her from making the trip. Off they went to meet the man with the rotating house for lunch. Lovely man, great house, and somehow one thing led to another and forces beyond me I couldn't stop and now we have a rotating house ourselves. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen, all for free. No subscription required. In the quest to build something rare and unique, certain people will go to the ends of the earth. For this couple, that wasn't just a metaphor. What you see above your head is about 30 tons of Newcastle Australian steel that was built in Australia, bolted together, then disassembled and shipped over on uh, two shipping containers. All that steel rides on 24 pairs of wheels and not just any old wheels. Each set of double wheels weighs about 300 pounds. A spinning house calls for something extraordinary in the mechanics, but what about all the ordinary stuff, like water and electricity? It all gets safely relegated to the center of the structure. All of the services actually come in fixed through this trough. The only area where they actually move is this part right here. There's actually about five feet of slack, and because the house oscillates, it goes one direction, 360, and then back again, 360. We don't have to worry about anything getting tangled up. So here we have the central hub of the rotating platform. It's rated for 200 tons of uplift and downlift. We figured we could have about three of these houses on top of this system. So what I'm gonna do now is actually start the house using my phone. We've got an app for that. The house is powered by two small motors just one horsepower each. Best of all, spinning the house uses about as much energy as doing a load of laundry. While down in the basement, you'll see the bare bones of the operation. Upstairs, the couple enjoy the place to its fullest.
See, this is what we call the, the, the great room. This is a full 1,250 square feet, and it's an open concept kitchen, dining room, and living room. We decided to keep the unique structure of the beams for the roof open. And a great room it is. Speaking of great, the place is hurricane proof. It's not like this couple ever settles for easy. But now that the payoff has arrived, they can sit back, relax, and enjoy the view. And the ride. They're very, very happy with the accommodations. With so much invested in this summer property, the couple extended the adventure to last the entire year. Our original plan was to operate the bed and breakfast during the summer months. Prince Edward Island in the Maritimes is beautiful in the summer and stay in Toronto for the winter time. But with a project like this, it came in not just a little bit over budget, but way over budget. And so we ended up having to sell our home in Toronto and my parents actually sold their house in Halifax and are now living with us in this house. What turned into a, a part-time business is now a full-time business and our full-time home. In a rotating cottage, it doesn't matter where you sit. The view will come to you. On the other side of the country is a luxury retreat that boasts a different view from literally every room. We designed the bathroom so that actually you are able to have a view. So the bathtub has a direct view, the vanity as well has a view, and then the shower you can see right through all the glazing so that you have a full-on view. Hi, I'm John. And I'm Jonalyn, and this is our retreat. John and Jonalyn love the isolation of their waterfront oasis though it's not without the occasional visitors. One time John and I were having coffee and saw a pod of dolphins swimming by. Special stuff like that, it's just magic. Jonalyn is raving about the majestic beauty of the Sunshine Coast, a place where the air smells a little sweeter. It's situated up here, northwest of Greater Vancouver. Though it's still on the mainland, you can only get here by ferry or float plane. I'm just enamored with everything West Coast. I think the architecture and the design acumen that they use here is so perfectly fitting with everything about the natural beauty of this place. It actually just fills your soul. Like, I just find it amazing to be here. Jonalyn is a designer who hails from the prairies. This lot was decidedly unprairie like This whole lot was originally just trees but we saw the vision of what this house looked like and we went down to a neighborhood uh, oyster bar and on the bar, we drew out the plan of what the house looked like and this looks exactly like it is now. That simple cocktail napkin design turned into something complex, a structure that vanishes into the forest. It sits down below the road and the second building being the coach house acts as a block. And we like our privacy. The 60 feet different from the roadway down to the level here, we're standing about six feet above ocean level here. We didn't want neon signs and saying this is a big house. <laughs> if privacy was their goal, they got it and much more, including quality, subtlety, and icing on the cake, sustainability. We want something that was very open and taking the timbers that were here, we've used timbers from the lot that we took down for various parts of the house. The nature of a timber frame house is historically set in Japanese construction and there's no actual hardware required to hold it together. And those timber frames are actually supporting the entire structure. You could take all of the walls down and anything else down within it and it would still be standing which is, I just think, a thing of beauty. No hardware required, and timber reclaimed from nature. Whether it's the beach stones or this beautiful cedar trees, we tried to incorporate all of those elements. And same with the colors that we chose within the house. I just went down and grabbed a bunch of rocks that caught my eye. And there's everything in there from that salmon -y pink color to the blues, of course, and they're actually in the rock, not just in the water. It speaks to you, it makes it so easy. While in Rome, it's best to do as the Romans. And if you're building on the coast, 
Go nautical. John Lynn gave me a challenge to look at having porthole doors, which you can find on old ships. So yeah, I went to the door and window manufacturer to have them built, and they said it couldn't be done. And then I said, well, keep trying. Portholes add a nice bit of whimsy that we wanted to have repetition of shape and a circle was actually part of one of the shapes that I wanted to repeat. So they allowed that nice bit of something different and there's really a lot of enjoyment in being able to open a window like that and then get the breezes coming through. With plenty of earthy and traditional touches, there is still room for Jonalyn to work her modernist mojo. We want stairs so you could see through the stairs and having the center piece of steel and carry that through to the top level, to the loft area, and also going down, giving a complete openness. And then with the cables, it's just the airiness that we're desirous of in the house. We wanted a Euro high gloss white kitchen, firstly for something different. Neither of us had had one of those before and it adds a, an interesting element. Plus I like the idea of the sheen and the cleanness. It really, it was meant to not detract from the rest of the house. Really the wood and the timbers are the features of the house along with the view. About that view, it's pretty much everywhere. We designed the bathroom so that actually you were able to have a view. So the bathtub has a direct view, the vanity as well has a view, and then the shower you can see right through all the glazing just so that you have a full on view. As the couple built their dream cottage, other big life events were underway. So how did it affect their relationship? We're happy to report that as the design came together, the marriage didn't come apart. We bought the property just before we got married, then worked on it, on the design, and then started construction. And uh, the trials and tribulations of being newly married and going through a construction of a new house that neither one of us have, had done before. <laughs> the marriage survived and people thought that <laughs> it might cause all sorts of problems, but it, it, it bonded us. No divorce dust here. In a place like this, who wants to fight? It's special for us because of proximity to get out of the city and get up here in short time and be right on the water, which we both love, and spend relaxation time and uh, feel totally away from, from the city. What it is is the perfect blend of everything that one wants in a retreat. It's comfortable, it's relaxing, it's filled with light, and it's filled with everything that's natural from around the area around it. And then you just walk out the doors and then you have this and what could be better? Escaping the city for this couple meant really beating the heat. When I was a child, it was a dump site for the local people. It was off and on fire and it was quite fascinating as a kid to come down on a bike and just like see all the smoke and everything. Hi, I'm Pat. I'm Lisa, and this is our retreat. Every cottage needs a foundation. Pat and Lisa Hastings weren't fussy about theirs. When I was a child, it was a dump site for the local people, and it was often on fire, and it was quite fascinating as a kid to come down on a bike and just like see all the smoke and everything. I know some people even recently have said, I don't know who'd want to build on a dump site, but people did. It seems one man's dump site was this couple's oasis. If you want a piece of an exclusive beach community, you have to do things a little differently. Just an hour's drive north of Winnipeg, there's a community of cottages lining the shores of Lake Winnipeg. It's called Victoria Beach, and it's been around since 1919. Sure, it's changed over the years, but one thing hasn't. There's still no cars. Community rules say you have to leave your vehicle in the parking lot by the main gate. That keeps the laneways free for cottagers to stroll and kids to play. It became a place where you would cycle or take a cab in and everybody can enjoy a way of life that's kind of gone the way of the dinosaurs. Lisa spent her childhood summers here and wanted her grandkids to do the same. 
My little grandbaby is the fifth generation of people at Victoria Beach in our family. My grandfathers were both Victoria Beach people. The problem is, cottages here rarely go up for sale. They're just handed down, generation to generation. And she and Pat wanted their own place now. Building a new cottage in Vic Beach is pretty much impossible. There just isn't any room, with one exception. At the edge of this little slice of heaven was the dump, a massive pile of trash right on the water's edge. It would have stayed a dump, except a developer, who just happened to be friends with Lisa and Pat, saw the potential, bought it, and divvied it up into lots. It's a spit of sand, really, with a marsh on one side and the lake, and uh, it's a peninsula. And he uh, developed it, sold the properties off, um, but it was the potential and, and the, the price at the, the time. Yeah, the attraction to having you know, the waterfront was, um, was something that we always dreamed, I always dreamed about having. So, with Victoria Beach in their blood and an opportunity to build on the water, the Hastings went for broke. My f family didn't think I was crazy, but a lot of other people did. Building on a trash heap is one thing, but there is another reason people thought they were crazy. They wanted to build the whole cottage out of secondhand wood. There was a pile of used timbers that were in a field for a number of years, and then there was a for sale sign on them, and I thought, well, that might make a nice cottage or start of a nice cottage for a timber frame. And then it got hard. It got really hard after that. We could not find more timber. We searched all over the country, literally. When we finally did find timber, they, there were big metal spikes, corroded nails. The cottage took two years to build. Most of that time was spent pulling those old nails out of the wood. Actually, this is a good view. These were actually floor timbers, so we had to go to find those nails, like some there were holes there, but to find those nails, you had to go through a metal detector. As soon as you got a beep, you'd have to go in and extract them, so it took hundreds of hours. Then came the job of building the fireplace. Lisa was worried about when she'd be able to enjoy it. Turns out the allure of a long, lazy summer can really motivate a guy. You were finished by me long weekend. I was so impressed, because the rocks were all in the living room, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna live with them all summer. Between the found at the side of the road rocks and the picked out of a field timbers, this cottage is exactly what you would call rustic. <laughs> rustic and um, like it's our taste. The wood and rock make it feel strong and sturdy, like a building that's been here for decades. The decor, on the other hand, never lets you forget you're standing in an old garbage dump. It was fun to find things and wonder what are those and realize there are parts of wood stoves, like the leg of a wood There's part of a revolver in there that I've got hanging on the cottage. This used to be a smoldering pile of trash, but after two long years of construction, it's now Patrick and Lisa Hastings' dream cottage. The cottage is roughly 2,500 square feet. So this was actually the girl, the uh, our two daughters' room. Um, they shared it all their their lives, and they love that. The master bedroom's up this way. It's it's small. We have a really nice view in the morning. Uh, we can open one eye and see if maybe it's a day we want to have coffee outside or inside. During construction. They used the dump site as their foundation. Once they moved in and started to decorate, it became their inspiration too. When we were uh, walking around here cleaning up the property and the beach and that, we would find the most amazing things. You could make mosaic tables out of the, the chip china, the broken teapots, uh, the plates, uh, bottles, tons of bottles. It was amazing to find those bottles. You'd think they'd be all broken, but there was so many bottles that were intact. We have some in the cottage that uh, are on display, old medicine bottles. You see them in, you know, secondhand stores now as, as they're artifacts. The outside of the cottage is also slowly getting covered with stuff they find poking out of the dirt. We like finding stuff, like things wash up just like a real ocean, and then we try and incorporate it into 
the property. I'm trying to build a fence back there so the vines can grow up it. It's still a work in progress. It was fun to find things. There's a revolver on the wall over there, but this is falling apart in my hand, but oh my goodness. What went on here back in the past? When they aren't digging for treasure, Lisa and Pat are busy living their Vic Beach dream. So what is there to do around here? What isn't there to do? There's so much to do here. It's not just we're on the property sitting around enjoying what life offers. There's recreational facilities like crazy. You can either have a really quiet existence here or you can go and play in a tournament, go yachting, go golfing. It's like crazy busy in a really amazing quiet way because everything is in an area. The green, the clubhouse, the stores. And the beaches. Don't forget the beaches. There are many beaches here, so when people say, let's go to the beach, then everybody has to figure out which beach to go to. There's quiet beaches and rocky beaches and social beaches. Glorious beaches, private waterfront, family history, and a car-free community. Maybe building on a dump site will become the next big thing. It's kind of rewarding that you're on a, an area that was once a garbage dump, basically, and, and all the refuse was here, and to, to have that property reclaimed and to be able to utilize that and, and create what this whole area has been. It's become like a dream to us to have this. This is my peaceful place. Every winter, I have this view in my head. It's my carrot. It gets me through the hard parts in winter, and it's just my favorite place is right here.